You are listening to TechCom, a podcast series by NTT Data dedicated to the telecommunications industry. In this second episode of the NTT Data podcast series called TechCom, we will dive into a very complex topic, how AI-powered decision and workflow automation can enable CSPs to monetize their network investments. Here to discuss how these technologies can help operators engage better with their clients and optimize their operations are Mark Jackson, Director Industry Principal at PEGA, and Luis Fernando Rubio, Telecom Executive Director at NTT Data Europe and LATAM. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Luis. Thanks for having me here. Okay. Just for start the conversation, we would like to talk a little bit about some of the main technologies that you in PEGA provide with uh, your solution. So from your experience, uh, how do artificial intelligence and automation help telco operators to engage better with their clients and to monetize or optimize the, the operations? Yeah, great question. I suppose um, where we see in PEGA, um, we see three main areas, I suppose, where, where people are, are using AI and automation, uh, particularly the CSPs and the sort of people that we're working with here. Uh, the first one really is, is maximizing value. So really, in today's hypersaturated markets, uh, AI in particular is very helpful in presenting the, the next best action, the next best decision, the next best thing to do for a customer. And a particular area where we see a lot of uh, CSPs gain value is through retention. So when you're engaging with a customer, when you're engaging with a, a client, What's the right thing to do? What can you do? What, what offer can you make here? And we see tens of percentage points of, of, of additional um, retention from that. And that leads to obviously $100 million of value in, in the world's largest operators. So that, that, that's, that's an interesting area. But you know, even, in, even in the B2B space, we're seeing, we've seen telcos, Verizon is a great example of somebody who's worked with Pega in the B2B space to, to help them you know, retain more customers and, and generate more revenue through the use of AI as well. Um, a second area is the simplification of service. So as people are moving, well, CSPs are wanting to digitally transform them and they're wanting to put their, their service journeys across multiple channels using uh, automation and AI together really to personalize those journeys, but automate as much as possible is, is really changing the game. And what with COVID happening, you know, that requirement to do that and to support multiple channels and to digitize has, has accelerated for the CSPs. Um, we've worked with customers like UPC in Switzerland who've changed their move journey from being 80 clicks in the contact center to a couple of clicks on, on, on the website, which is a great one. And Vodafone are using Pegasus technology to digitize their troubleshooting as well. So that, that's another area. Um, and then the final one, I suppose, really is boosting efficiency in general within your organization. So trying to automate as much as possible and take cost out of it. And we're seeing all sorts of areas in the telco. We're seeing some companies users in, in procurement. So improving the procurement process so they can procure a lower cost or, or bring new partners and, and, and people on board quicker. Um, and then another area is, is things like um, automating network rollout. Cox Communications are using us to automate and improve their, their network rollout. But one of the biggest areas and the area that we're focusing on in the, in the catalyst here is, is the sort of order orchestration, partner onboarding, order management space, which is a, a great area where, um, especially in this complex multi-vendor environment that you, we're, we're looking at, it, that 5G is, is opening up to the CSPs, all of the orchestration of those different parts um, through that order process is a, is a key area for automation, I think. Yes, I think that you mentioned one very relevant point that is uh, uh, simplification, especially when we are talking about the, the, the B2B market and how telco operators address the, their corporative uh, client. And one of the, I mean, uh, one of the main challenge that they already have is how to simplify the way they purchase, that they buy a cloud solution, okay, together with communication. So the the, the main goal that they that they have is, is how to to make simple for the for the B two B clients because we are talking about 
eh, cloud, communication, edge application. There are many things that the telco wants to, to, to provide to their B2B clients. So in, in that sense, eh, which use cases uh, some examples do you foresee that can where, where this simplification can can apply very well for telco operators yeah i think it's a really really great question i think the we're only just starting to see some of those use cases because the beauty i think of of the of the i suppose the generation we're moving into in in the csp world with these you know the speed of wireless networks and the ability to connect so many things and you know everything from sensors in i was speaking to a telco the other day was talking about wanting to put sensors in fields so they can tell whether the the the, the ground is dry or, or need, the, the thing needs watering so they can maximize or, or, or correctly water the field and not overwater it underwater it because natural resources and esg is important all the way through to you know connected cars we've got Teslas and all sorts of cars that are connected now on printing data. So we've got all of these different things that are now connected at real time, real speed. I think that the 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 opportunities are boundless. And I think, you know, using technology, it's one of the areas we're focusing on Pega is, is helping people have a technology backbone that allows them to innovate and um, with low code platforms like we've got, allows them to go where their, their business needs to go. Because I think a lot of telcos don't really know where they, where they need to go. So that that ability to be agile, to fail fast as a lot of a lot of the sort of, you know, the, the, the people like Google talk about, you know, trialing things, failing fast, getting on with the next thing. I think that is that, that is a, a powerful place that, that, that technology can, can help CSPs with. Yes, yes, we, we, we totally agree from, from NCT data. And I think that you touch a, a, a very important capability that is the, the agility and probably the, the B2B clients they have the reference in delivering services and experiences of the hyperscalers. So for uh, when it comes to, to agility, agility delivering uh, services. So for, for telco operator is a, is a huge challenge. I mean, how, how they deliver, deliver services uh, and, and how they respond to their business areas in order to place into the market to position into the market new new kind of solution and here we we consider that uh, that here is uh, when low code can into play so why why do you think that low code is some uh, is an important paradigm in, in in software development nowadays well i think we've already touched on one of those and that that is like we said their agility you know so that that ability to be agile uh, to try things quicker to do them at a lower total cost of ownership uh, and make changes quicker and easier. Um, Cap Gem and I did a study a few years ago in Pegas, uh, looking at Pegas platform and other low code platforms and saying that um, platforms, low code platforms allow people to change their applications 40 times quicker than, um, than traditional coding techniques. So that ability to do that. But I think it also um, opens that up and democratizes it. When you've got a low code platform that's drag and drop, you can open the aperture to the number of people that can work in that platform. It's not just people who can code, you know, it's people who can, you know, build almost exactly that sort of thing. And we're seeing, you know, we, we, we um, saw recently Vodafone said they want to, you know, it's not about networks, they want to recruit 7,000 software engineers, software developers, you know, they're in the well, you you already mentioned the hyperscalers and the googles of the world those sort of thing so they're, they're probably going to be competing with google for those people um so if you, if you can use a low code platform you can hopefully do more with that number of people the number of developers that, that you can recruit so csps can get more done with with low code platforms and they can get it get it done at quicker speed so i think you know that the ability to 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 fail fast like we said get things out there quickly and easily test things trial things um, and, and open that up is, is a key area where low code platform and that drives innovation because if you can put a platform into the hands of more people um, and get them to try more things, then undoubtedly you will get more more, more value from your business. You will get more things out the out the other end that are are useful to the business and, and change the way the business can operate. You are listening to TechCom, a podcast series by NTT Data, dedicated to the telecommunications industry. I think that we have a clear example of the application of low code in, in this year catalyst. 
Okay, when we define, uh, I mean, a business scenario from scratch, uh, business requirements, and how uh, how we we accomplish. Okay, yeah, the, yeah, we're going to have a great example of, of of yeah mm -hmm. the, the power of low code, really. Yeah. yeah. So moving on to the to the catalyst topic, okay, uh, as you know, where we address the challenge of how a telco operator can move beyond connectivity, okay, by by selling new data solution that solve real problem of their corporate clients. Okay, like the, the the example of the of the of the airport, the smart airport, okay, where the, the, the airport sells different kind of application to, to their clients and these applications are provided by the CSP and at the same time third parties provide to the CSP. So it's a scenario where uh, for 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 us, it's about adding capabilities coming from different partners from, from third parties. Okay. Um, and also to orchestrate the I mean the 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 delivery of this product coming from different parties. So from your point of view, when we are talking about partnering, I mean when we are talking about onboarding product and services coming from different parties, from different partners and delivering to the to the final clients, uh, which are the main IT capabilities that a CSP should consider okay if they were if, if they want to success in this kind of new business scenario integrating different parties i suppose from our point of view i think it is low code platforms and it is that that, that ai powered decision and workflow automation you know the 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 different types of processes that there will need to be executed there will, you know there, there will be the general things of you know you've got to onboard new partners like we're showing in the catalyst and then you've got to uh, orchestrate the delivery of those services to the to the to the b2b customer and then be able to provision those services to the end customer so there's you know the, the sort of three uh, core stages but the the nuances the the differences within those journeys will be different depending on the and the products that you're wanting to bundle and those bundles you know maybe maybe you know different in different situations we're using an airport as a smart a smart space example here but you know I think we've all been to loads and loads of conferences and, and events like that that are, you know, Mobile World Congress and the TM Forum itself is a great example of a, a three day event that's put on. Everybody's different. That 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 space itself, that event itself might might want different services for a for a few days to support the event. So the ability to bundle those services in a way that fits the needs of the particular type of conference, you, you know, the, the, the event space in Copenhagen has multiple different types of events, I'm sure. But all have different requirements, so that that dynamicism will lead to nuances and slight differences in the in in the journeys and that ability to use low code platforms that can orchestrate those those subtly different journeys. I think is powerful. I think it's really exciting time for CSPs at the moment to get into these areas. Um, and you know, as I said earlier, all of these new technologies that are sort of you know coming together to hit a perfect storm. You've got mech mobile edge computing you've got all those connected devices you've got the capabilities of 5g that that provide a huge amount of of additional bandwidth and and real timeness to, to the connectivity i think that there's all sorts of things out there so that just yeah being able to come up with these new things almost a a, a, a no notice when you don't exam expect it and the other thing is we're seeing some of the telcos move into adjacent markets as well so you know was be saw Liberty Global who seem to be going into into things like car charging. Uh, Telefonica themselves are going into like this. They've got these e-vertical strategies where they're moving into 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 adjacent verticals. You've got some of the utilities and energy companies uh, across Europe selling broadband services, so they're moving into the telco space. All these areas are blurring between the different boundaries. So the the ecosystem that needs to be brought on and connected is going to be different. Depending on where the telco decides it wants it wants to go, we did some we've done some great work with with Vodafone in Italy around what they call a third party hub, which allows them to onboard these new third party suppliers as quicker as and when they need them, so they they can be more agile. So yeah, some great um, areas that people can get into in a really exciting time for the telco market. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think that new business models, of course, are key in this in this I mean this new game. No? In the in the Catalyst project, we are uh, experiencing with this B2B 
to B2X, okay, that is uh, beyond the traditional B2B2X, okay, we are including a new actor between the CSP and the final client, that is the therefore. So I think that the, the industry should be open to to I mean to to, to define the, this kind of uh, new business scenarios. And one of the outcomes of, from our point of view in NCT data is that the the IT is is in place. I mean, it's just about uh, addressing a goal, uh, making the, the the correct decision, and I mean, and, and go for for it. I mean, it did sense. Uh, we the, the the catalyst project this year is, is a clear example that this is something that can be, I mean, that can be commercially released, okay, in in short terms. So, from your point of view, uh, which are the most important contribution from from Pega in this catalyst project I mean in order to to make uh, successful or feasible the, this kind of b2 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 x scenario in the, in the in the real world yeah great great question there yeah and uh, you know I think we've already discussed you know Pega provides a, a low code platform for AI powered decisioning and workflow automation and they're the key capabilities we're bringing to this 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 plat this um catalyst here but I think there's two areas I would like to uh, bring out or talk a little bit more about first is um you know tm forum open apis so whenever you bring these sort of ecosystems together the ability to connect the different parties the different components the different capabilities is much much easier when you've got these standard apis and you know we're utilizing some of these apis in in the catalyst to great effect to make it make it much easier so i think i think that's that's a great area and obviously that helps regardless of, of what, what industry you're in, but with, with CSPs, the TM Forum Open APIs, it'll get an example of that sort of thing. Um, and the second one is, is we've touched upon it a little bit, but the, the sort of workflow orchestration. You know, we, we, we in Pega are being the sort of the glue between the different systems, orchestrating that partner onboarding between the different systems, orchestrating the order delivery between the different systems. Um, so that, that glue where you, you, you know, you, you not only need to connect the, the partners, but you need to connect the workflows between the different partners so that you don't have manual steps. You can automate as much as possible and it brings down the time and the cost to, to, to onboard new people and to get these orders processed for these products, I think it is a key area. So, yeah. From your point of view, which is the role that CSP should expect from a system integrator or a technological consultancy company like us, like Entity Data, in help achieving this new kind of architecture? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think there's multiple roles that you can play in, the, in or system integrators can play into those roles, um, into into this ecosystem. Sorry. Um, you know, the 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 advice at the first point is a, is a great example. You know, where 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 the integrators can help. You know, you will see a huge number even you know software providers like us we see a huge number of different different industries different operators within 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 the, even the, even the telco industry so those are those advice and guidance that we can provide obviously you know without without giving away the the uh, the, the the sort of secrets that other telcos are doing but yeah we we see that so we can provide that level of level of expertise and an industry-wide uh, focus that i think um uh, the CSPs need it, it, when when they're trying to come up with these things, um, and then you know, like I said before, when you come up with ideas, helping them to trial those, prototype them, do things like we're doing this catalyst, which is a prototype showing examples of what can happen, and you know, helping them to to tr you know like test these ideas before they go into full production, but being able to productionize them quite quickly afterwards using using the different technologies available today, I think is a, is a key place where, where we can all help the CSP. Yeah. Yeah. We, we also like to, 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 to be a, an innovator, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, to, yeah. to help the cooperators yeah. in the innovation. And this catalyst is at the end is a, is a, is kind of a, a way to, to, to innovate. So I think that just uh, we are uh, getting to the end. I, I would like to ask you a, a tricky question, okay? That is very simple to ask, but surely not too easy to answer. Uh, related with the with the innovation, that is, uh, what's innovation for Pega? <laughs> yeah, that is a, a very simple question for you to ask. <laughs> Maybe a little harder for me to answer, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a really good question because everybody is talking about innovation. You know, if you're not talking about innovation at the moment, you're talking about you know transformation and it's, it seems to be those are the two things that, that we get involved in in questions and and engagements with 
you know, throughout the CSP market that we're working with here at Pega. So yeah, it, it's really, and, and you, you have a really great question, like I said. So I think what is important for me to say, you know, of, of what we see in, in, in our customers is we, we are provide, looking to provide a platform that allows them to innovate. We work with yourselves, you know, integrators like yourselves to think about those areas that people can innovate in. But one of the key things we want to do is provide a platform for innovation. We talk to a lot of our customers about helping them use our technology and our skills and the skills of their, you know, one more greater partners like, like NTT to create an innovation factory around their business mm -hmm. and create the environment in which people can innovate using a low code platform that allows them, like I said early, to build things that they hadn't thought of, trial things, fail fast, get business people more involved in, in thinking up of ideas and, and building things around that. So that, that low code um, innovation platform is a key area, but it, it's the basis for innovation. It's important to say that low code can't do that on its own. You know, we talked about APIs, we talked about connectivity, we talked about platforms like Pega being the glue within an organization. The innovation comes about by being able to tie, in many cases, tie together the existing capabilities and systems that the CSP itself has internally, but increasingly, as we're seeing from things like the Catalyst, the ecosystem partners that they can also connect to and connect their, their own systems to other, other, other systems in the, in the ecosystem. That's where the real innovation comes. The sort of, you know, the telco plus other people systems is the, the one plus one equals three type innovation, you know, you know, so that's, that's it really. Mm -hmm. That whole um, flexibility to innovate and the, the platform that can provide that agility and flexibility to allow people to come up with new ideas and trial them quickly and easily is, I think is key. Yes. But that's all for uh, from today's episode. I think that we have a very good opportunity on Copenhagen, okay, to to show to the to the telco industry how this kind of innovation can improve. I mean the society and the I mean the, the vertical industries in general. So uh, nice to have you to have you here in this in this uh, podcast. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks very much for having me, Lewis. As advanced technologies such as AI become an integral part of most telecom companies, today we were joined by Mark Jackson, Director Industry Principal at PEGA, and Luis Fernando Rubio, Telecom Executive Director at NTT Data Europe and LATAM, for an insightful conversation about the multiple ways in which this technology can help operators morph into complex service providers to monetize 5G ecosystems that promote innovation. Join us for our next episode of the NTT Data TechCom podcast series where we will dive into which are today's most advanced and secure monetization schemes for CSPs that can manage edge smart spaces ecosystems.